Hey guys, just a quick heads up, the audio quality on this video isn't going to be quite as good as usually they are. Uh, the reason why was I just recently got a webcam, I'm going to be starting a video podcast soon with my friend Kyle. However, I just, uh, I didn't realize that when I plugged in the webcam, it set that to my default recording device. So, uh, if you hear some poor audio quality, that's why. Do apologize for that, you know, I try to keep myself to a high standard with this kind of stuff. Uh, I've definitely screwed up before, as you guys know. Probably screw up again, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. So I predicted the Chicago Bears to do very well this season, and one of the reasons why I did it was because I did think that Mitchell Trubisky could make a jump from year two to year three. I thought he did show some promise in his first year. I'm like, we can even take a look at this play right off the bat, where what's going to happen is that first things first, it's going to be a cover three zone that the Miami Dolphins are in. And for Chicago, they're going to have a receiver running a deep route right over there. This definitely can get open, and it is going to be a route that Trubisky is going to look to throw to right when the ball is snapped. Because as you see right when the ball is snapped, there's only one safety who's deep. And, you know, this is the kind of situation where for Taylor Gabriel, he can just straight up outrun guys. He's just one of those fast dudes that can run past people. And so for Trubisky, he's kind of just going to say, Okay, I'm going to trust that you can outrun your assigned man. And there's only one safety who's deep. Admittedly, that safety is cheating pretty high up to the top half of the screen. But even with that, look at this just perfect throw that Trubisky is going to put on here. I mean, he would do this from time to time his first season. This wasn't just, you know, one of his only good plays. He would have a decent amount of deep down the field balls that would be complete. He, he would. I mean, that's something that would happen from time to time. I'll even show the other angle just to give you sort of more of an idea. I mean, listen, this is a, a good throw. I mean, in 2018, yes, people will look at the just 3,200 yards, but he also had 24 touchdowns to just 11 interceptions. So his passer rating was 95.4, which, again, we all know passer rating, not a perfect stat. But even yards per attempt, which probably is my favorite stat, that was at 7.4. Solid. Definitely kind of on the low end, but... Not a disaster by any means, and it looked like he was going to be getting better, but instead what happened was he got a lot worse. He went from 7.4 yards per attempt to 6.1 yards per attempt, which is just a huge drop-off. You know, 2019, he was not very good, and you know, people are going to make fun of the Pro Bowl in 2018, and yeah, that was because a lot of guys canceled, but also he had a solid year. He put himself in what looked like it was going to be maybe the top half of quarterbacks, but then it just didn't work out too well. I mean, even in the playoff game that they lost, he made this play where this was, they need a field goal to win the game, cover two zone that the Eagles are in. He has a receiver running that route right there. And just watch this throw he's going to put on here. I mean, this is just going to be an absolutely perfect throw. He ex hits Robinson exactly where he has to. And that put them in field goal range. They lost, you know, there was a double doink, but they had a shot to win it. And, you know, Trubisky, like, that's what he would do sometimes, is that, A, he would come through when he had to, and, B, he would be able to make these deep balls down the field. Now, granted, like, let's get into the negatives of what happened even last year. It's not like this guy was great last year. I mean, this play is going to be a simple pick play, and this is actually perfect because there's only going to be one Green Bay player in the bottom half of the screen, whereas there's two Chicago players in that area. So running this pick play here, you know, Nagy is just dialing up the perfect call. Like, as you see, right when the ball is snapped, he has a man open. And keep in mind, this is actually a third down and two. So all I have to do is just get a couple of yards to get the first down. And not only that, but the closest Green Bay player is all the way over there. And if, you know, if you can make a move, make one guy miss, this could be a touchdown. It really could. So this is a great situation for Chicago. Great play call by Matt Nagy. And then Trubisky ends up just completely whiffing on the throw, which honestly just can't happen. Like, that's just one of those where if you're a play caller, you're just like, what am I supposed to do? I dial up the perfect play call. My quarterback can't make a pass 10 yards away from him. That's a problem. And that is Trubisky's biggest problem. Like, I don't think even his most diehard fans will still acknowledge he has a consistency problem when it comes to those short-range passes. Uh, just accuracy in general, not his strong suit. And you know what? That is probably the most important thing in a quarterback, which is why he has struggled from time to time. But I do think that there is a reason why he went from, 
you know, decent his uh, second year. He wasn't, he still wasn't great, but he was okay, you know, middle of the road, which a middle of the road starter, like, you'll take that for sure. But then from this season, it was like you couldn't even play with him at times. And I think one of the problems with, with his play was simply with the fact that the offensive line really took a huge step back from 2018 to 2019. I mean, just looking at pro football focus, they were the 11th best offensive line in 2018, and they were the 25th best offensive line in 2019. So that is a huge drop-off, and it really did show. I also do think that the Taylor Gabriel injury hurt him, but really, I mean, like, let's just think about it. What makes Mitchell Trubisky good? What are the positive traits of Trubisky? He can run the ball very well, he can scramble very well, and he can hit some deep throws. So, if you do sell out to make sure that you stop the run, well, then he can throw it over the top, and at least he can, at times, convert on those with some consistency. And quite frankly, you can live with that, you know? That's something you can work with. But when your offensive line isn't giving you time, well, then it's really a lot more difficult to work with. Like... Take a look at this play, where what's going to happen is that it's going to be a cover one linebacker blitz for Philadelphia. And so, you know, there's a route that can be very effective against this type of coverage. It's a go route towards the sideline because single safety deep, you know, it's very similar to the cover three zone play I showed you earlier. This is absolutely a play that can work. And for the Bears, I mean, this is a good situation, but... Keep in mind, it's a blitz, so there's going to be five people rushing the passer as opposed to four. You can't double-team anybody. And what Philadelphia is going to do is they're going to have a twist where they have two interior linemen. Make sure they run into the center and the guard. They're going to swing another Philadelphia player around, see if they can get a straight shot to Trubisky. That's the way this play is going to work for the Eagles on paper. And it's the way it's going to work in practice as they're able to easily get through and get the Mitchell Trubisky. And he never even had time to look over and see if his receiver was going to get open because he got sacked so quickly. And that is another key problem with the Bears' offense. I mean, if you run your offense around, we're going to get creative with our run schemes, we're going to run the ball a lot, and if you fully sell out to stop the run, well, hey, we're not worried about that. And you know why? Because Mitchell Trubisky can throw a deep ball. You know, I mean, nobody is perfectly consistent on those deep throws except for Patrick Mahomes and, you know, maybe prime Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, but for the most part, nobody is. However, he can be consistent enough that it's almost like he's just as consistent as throwing a ball 50 yards down the field as he is throwing a ball five yards down the field. That's just kind of how he is. But, you know, again, you can work with that, but you really do need to be in a great situation for it to work. You need the line play. You need deep threat receivers. And I do think that for the Bears, you know, for Bears fans, they're kind of just saying, well, great, we can try to build up a great situation around Mitchell Trubisky, or we can try to just get a quarterback where we don't need the perfect situation to have happen. And I do understand that. I think that that does make sense. But it's worth mentioning Trubisky, you know, in the right situation could maybe be valuable. You know, I, I think maybe you could look at Kansas City once uh, Mitchell Trubisky finishes his rookie contract. Maybe they'll take him as a backup. I could see something like that happening. Absolutely. However, maybe my biggest problem with Trubisky isn't even physical, it's mental. It's a play like this, where cover three zone, they have a play designed to beat this coverage. What they're going to do is have their three receivers on the bottom half of the screen run those three routes right there. One of those receivers is going to get right into a gap in coverage, and since there's two other receivers who are in those zones, this is a very good situation because this means that the two Eagles that are playing the zone coverage right over there have to stay a little bit further out, meaning that there should be a window for Trubisky to make this throw. Granted, it's a little bit further away because Trubisky is going to take the snap on the hash marks at the top half of the screen, but still, this is the throw he can make. And watch, after the ball is snapped, it works out about as perfectly as you could ask. I mean, there is a couple of Eagles that are going to try to run over, see if they can knock the ball away, but I mean, this is what you want. This is why you drew up this play for this situation. However, Trubisky, he kind of sees that maybe he has an opening to run right over there. It's not a guarantee by any means, but, you know, he has gotten through these kind of gaps before, and so he's going to try to run through there, but it just doesn't work out and he gets sacked. And now, quite frankly, I know people are going to say, well, hey, he's pulled off this kind of thing a hundred times, you know, what's the big deal? But to me, that's not the right call in that situation. 
yes, Trubisky is very good in those uh, types of plays from time to time, but it wasn't the right call because there was going to be other players who could run over and make a tackle. This was zone coverage. Plenty of people were running in. It's just not the right decision for Mitchell Trubisky. He has to make that throw there, but quite frankly, he wasn't confident in himself to make that type of throw, and I think that's a really dangerous thing. When you have a quarterback who doesn't even believe in himself, it seems like Matt Nagy at times lost faith in Trubisky, and quite frankly, I don't know if you can work with that. You know, you have to have some faith in Trubisky. You just do, and if you don't have faith in your quarterback, you need a new quarterback. So the idea really is, hey, get Mitchell Trubisky's mind right, build a team around him, or just say, you know what, screw it, let's get a new quarterback, let's build a new system, let's make that work. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if it's not working, it's not working. Either you build up a good offensive line, or you just say, you know what, we're going to get a new quarterback. There are new quarterbacks that you can get for free, for free agency, where you don't have to give up draft capital we're not going to see a ton of times like this, but this is a good opportunity for Chicago, if they so choose, to go out and to get a quarterback. And here's what I think they do. Here's what I would do is I would try to get a guy like Ryan Tannehill, try to get a, just, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, one of those guys. And you don't have to get rid of Mitchell Trubisky. I think a lot of people sort of say, well, do you want to just take a gamble on someone who another team is choosing to not resign? But you don't have to do that. You can keep both guys. Mitchell Trubisky is still going to be on his rookie contract. Keep him for one last year. Maybe start him if you feel good about him in training camp. Or just say, you know what, you're a backup now. We'll keep you this year. If you do really well in practice, you show us something, then we'll keep you around. And if you don't, then no worries. Go somewhere else because we have a new guy in Teddy Bridgewater or whoever they so choose. It's what the Tennessee Titans did with... Uh, Tannehill from Mariota. I think we're going to see more and more teams do something like this. That's just my opinion. But hey, I'd like to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about Mitchell Trubisky as a whole? Do you agree with me that he was, you know, showing some promise, a guy you can work with, but he has to be in the right situation? Because that's what I think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, Keep in mind, everyone remember to uh, check out the other people making content on this channel because uh, they're pretty good. They're making a lot of good content. Really enjoying that. There's also some blogs. I might write a blog today or tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. The blogs are on my website. You can click the link in the description for that. And anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.